Mankind has a deep need to explore, to learn, to know. We also happen to be sociable creatures. It is important for us to know if we are alone in the dark. Stephen Hawkins After making its way home on the second Lagrange point, the JWST has done far more than just look into the past. It's begun to look for the origins of life itself. Its earliest success was the discovery of a potentially habitable planet in a Trappist solar system. But now, the JWST has found signs of life somewhere nearer to home. Proxima Centauri is the closest neighbor at the Milky Way, sitting just four light years away, but it has been holding a secret that only the JWST could uncover. Proxima B is the second planet in this solar system and has been the source of some very unusual signals, the kind that have left even the most brilliant of scientists in the lurch. The planet seems to have an indolo mind scene, which means that there is a light being emitted from the surface of the planet, like seeing the Earth at night from the ISS. This raises several questions about the possibility of another sentient and sufficiently sophisticated life form that is responsible for these artificial lights. So far, no formal statement has come from NASA on the subject, but it is very likely that they will dismiss it as a chromatic abbreviation or light coming from a distant galaxy, but even they can't say this for certain. So what are these unexplained lights? Could they really be indicative of intelligent life on the planet, or are humans just getting their hopes up? Have we really had interstellar neighbors under our nose this entire time? Answering these questions will require some closer inspection. How it could possibly be aliens? Number 1. Illumination First of all, how can we be certain that alien technology exists on another planet, especially lights, or that would imply that aliens have also evolved to see light in the same wavelengths as us? In their research paper on this very topic, Tabor and Loeb scaled artificial illumination as a fraction of the light reflected off of the daylight side of the planet. If the night side illumination, Proxima B, could reach 5% of the total daylight illumination, the JWST could discern them with about 85% accuracy. If the nighttime illumination would just cross 9% of total daylight illumination, the accuracy can go all the way up to 95% accuracy. Tabor and Loeb worked out these values assuming that the hypothetical civilization would use LADs with the same artificial spectrum as our lights. Now, 5% might not seem like a lot, but to put that into perspective, Earth's artificial illumination is a meager 0.001% of the total daylight illumination. The civilization on Proxima B would have to be 500 times brighter than our own to be detected by the JWST. Number 2. Tidally Locked the range of Proxima b to its sun means that the planet is likely tidally locked. This means that they complete an orbit in the time it takes them to revolve around their axis. Planets like Proxima b, which orbit red dwarf stars, are particularly susceptible to tidal locking because of their close proximity to their star. Closer to home, we can see tidal locking in the orbit of the moon, which has one side of its face constantly facing Earth, which we refer to as the near side of the moon. Now, needless to say, a planet like this will have some serious daylight issues, especially considering it orbits Proxima Centauri in 11.2 days at a distance of 7 million kilometers. It would mean that one side of the planet is exposed to intense radiation from the sun, while the other is plunged in perpetual darkness, except, of course, from reflected stellar illumination. This could make it easier for the JWST to contrast the artificial lights coming from this side. Why it's most probably not aliens. The question of whether there is some alien civilization on Proxima B has been popping up all over the place. Is there any concrete evidence that this is the case? Well, this is the internet and everything here runs on speculation. The best evidence we have is the signal that came from the general direction of Proxima B. This signal was termed the BLC-1 back in April 2019. Now, this is far-fetched for two major reasons. Reason number one. The first is that humans have been receiving strange radio wave signals from the recesses of the galaxy ever since Nikola Tesla set up his magnifying transmitter in 1899. He heard three synchronous beeps and assumed that it was extraterrestrial life. In 1929, Jorgen Halls sent a radio transmission from his home that returned him only moments later. And much like Nikola Tesla, he assumed that extraterrestrial life was the only reasonable conclusion. Instantly chalking everything down to aliens is not the answer. We know today that most of the stray radio transmissions we receive 
are either those that are bouncing between radio towers or ones that come from pulsars. A pulsar is a rotating star that emits radio waves and pulses, and seems like a likely explanation to the signal supposedly received from Proxima b. Recall that the signal came from the general direction of Proxima Centauria, and not particularly from it. This could indicate that there is an uncatalogued pulsar somewhere yonder emitting the radio waves. Reason number two. The second reason we believe that this signal could not possibly be genuine is because it was detected by Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or SETI. Australia's Park Observatory has had its ears to the stars in hopes that they would eventually pick up signals from intelligent life. Now, since this signal was detected by an institution whose goal is to confirm the existence of aliens, you could naturally assume that there would be a bit of a bias, or maybe a lot of a bias. They have sensationalized the interception, and a follow-up analysis has all but confirmed that the intercepted frequency of around 980 megahertz is consistent with the movement of the planet. So, this signal is likely to cause a very terrestrial phenomenon. No other research or analysis has been done on BLC-1. Now, we won't do much to discredit SETI, especially since they gave us the WOW signal that was picked up by the Big Ear Radio Observatory in Ohio in 1977. The only reason we remotely suspect this of being genuine is because the frequency intercepted was 1420 megahertz, which is a radio frequency that hydrogen naturally emits. Only an intelligent being would be clever enough to transmit a signal tied to the most fundamental element on Earth. But unfortunately, this signal came from a grouping of stars called Shai Sagittarii, not Proxima Centauri. Why it is statistically improbable? Proxima Centauri is exactly 4.25 light years from Earth and is faintly visible with the naked eye. If we can see it, the astronomers can definitely see it. Now, there are two planets that reside in the Goldilocks region of the solar system. One of them is a gas giant, and the other is Proxima b. Proxima b is just 17% bigger than Earth, and since it is in the Goldilocks region, it has a suitable temperature to accommodate water. This, by all means, does not mean that it contains water. Despite its ideal location in the solar system, scientists hypothesize that if Proxima b had an atmosphere like ours, it would long ago had succumbed to solar flares and intense radiation. It is not suitable for life. And anyways, let's look at it this way. We have been looking for alien life for so long, and only now we find that the answer has been under our nose this entire time. It is nothing short of absurd, and those who claim otherwise back it up with bogus and ambiguous claims. Now, you don't have to take our word for it. Louis Dartnell, an astrobiologist and a professor of science communication at University of Westminster, made it clear that if there is intelligent life there, it would almost certainly have spread much more widely across the galaxy. The chances of the only two civilizations in the entire galaxy happening to be neighbors among 400 billion stars absolutely stretches the bounds of rationality. So, should we bet on finding extraterrestrial life on Proxima Centauri? The findings from any evidence we have is inconclusive, and the only research reports we have on the matter are based entirely on speculation. Without any concrete grounds to support the theory, we wouldn't get your hopes up just yet. But it is a big universe, and much like our ancestors before us, we look up at it and wonder what's out there. At least we can revel in the fact that our primitive curiosity is what's driving us on the verge of a breakthrough. So there you are, guys. I hope this video offers some good insight. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content just like this. And as always, thanks for watching.